reach out such fame. Your own personal Jesus. Someone who hears your prayers. Someone who cares. Your own personal Jesus. Someone to hear your prayers. Someone who's there. Feeling unknown, you're all alone. Flesh and bone by the telephone. Lift up the receiver, I'll make you a believer. Take second best, put me to the test. Things on your chest you need to confess. I will deliver, you know I'm a forgiver. Reach out, such faith. Reach out, such faith. Your own personal Jesus. Someone to hear your prayers. Someone who's there. Your own personal Jesus. Someone to hear your prayers. Someone who cares. Feeling unknown and you're all alone. Flesh and bone by the telephone. Lift up the receiver, I'll make you a believer. Now we'll deliver, you know I'm a forgiver. Reach out, touch faith. Reach out, such faith. Hey, my name is Gravity Groove. Welcome to Not Safe for Work Room Terra. That was a classic Depeche Mode song called Personal Jesus. And uh, singing is still super, super difficult. I don't have real full control yet of my registers. Um, all the vibration that goes through my head kind of feels hurty. So uh, some of the easier songs are some of the deeper voiced songs. So I'm just sort of still trying to do them, even though they don't sound as good, just kind of for practice and uh, to make sure I'm trying to use the muscles as they are intended in really, really light, really light touch sort of ways. Uh, you don't want to let everything atrophy. Uh, vocal vocal nodes, vocal muscles, uh, all singing is a is a is a muscle training thing like lifting weights so if you let it go too long you atrophy and you're uh, you're gonna lose octaves you're gonna lose ability you're gonna lose flexibility so even though it does not feel good and we do not sound very good uh, we gotta keep trying so today we're going to uh, we're gonna goof around with a dumb build that will probably lose a whole bunch and we'll see how that goes. It is uh, largely an anti Lee Sin build, although we haven't really been seeing that much Lee Sin in Diamond. Uh, mostly we're seeing Burn, but because this deck is Radiant Guardian, that's okay too. Uh, we also noticed that today there were uh, there was a reveal for the new champion in Bilgewater, which is pretty cool. Uh, Tom. Kench, Tom Kench, Tom Kench, is it Tom or Taham? I don't know. He's a, a giant uh, whale looking creature that eats other critters and uh, his powers look pretty cool. Round start, he's a 2-6 for 4, 
create an acquired taste in hand. Level up, I've captured three units. When I level, obliterate all captured enemies and release all allies. Uh, acquired taste is a card he creates every round. Tom swallows an enemy unit. It strikes him and then he captures it. Uh, so in three rounds, ideally you're capturing three, uh, three enemy units and leveling him up to obliterate them. This is going to require a lot of healing because the fact that he strikes, uh, he gets struck when he consumes uh, is definitely going to force us to be paired with like probably target. Uh, so we'll see what comes of that. He also has, I think this is his champion spell, is Bayou Brunch. Uh, an ally captures another ally and gains the captured ally's stats, which is a pretty interesting one. Huh. He like uh, Pokemon evolves them. Weird. It'll be interesting to see how that's used. And there's also a couple of the creatures here. There's Wise Fry, which is a 6 drop for a 3-8. It says play, deal 1 to all other allies, and grant me plus 1 power for each of them. Uh, so the theoretically the largest this could be is an 8-8 eight, eight Overwhelm for 6, which is kind of bonkers. But we'll see if it ends up being worth it. Honestly, I don't know. It does seem like it's just going to be a great, uh, a great card to put into Vlad decks. And Shakedown, which is the card I'm most excited for, I think. Uh, one mana and Burst, which is awesome. Uh, deal two to an ally to grant two enemies vulnerable. That's pretty awesome. I mean, there are a lot of spots. And the fact that it's Burst means you can often trade out a, a creature that was going to die to a chump block anyway. Uh, to give two enemies vulnerable. And it's not just for the round. It's just give two enemies vulnerable. That's pretty good. That gives you a lot of... Uh, a lot of traction, and that seems like it would be fun to be able to pressure your opponent's Lee Sin. Like, they're all about protecting their Lee Sin and going in on their turn. But if they have to do it on your turn and their turn, you might be able to run them out of resources with the right kind of deck. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the deck I was talking about is this. Um... I don't know if ultimately I want to be in a Lux Remembrance shell because sometimes in Remembrance low rolls uh, I feel like I'd rather just be in like maybe uh, maybe the old Noxian version or maybe use Sichuani or maybe Trundle um, but at the moment this is what we're trying the fact that we have Lux does give us a certain ability to to go over the top in mid-game, so it means we're a little less likely to just run out of fuel. If you do get Lux flipped and you do get even one, uh, one spark, it tends to be enough to get really good tempo and uh, get you back in the game. We've got uh, actually 14 spells when you think about it, and 20, uh, 26 creatures because... Three of our spells are remembrances. Um, the numbers of this, uh, I'm still tweaking. I threw in a kindly tavern keeper because diamond seems to be absolutely plagued with burn. So I felt like we needed a little more protection and tempo here. Uh, there were a lot of games where by the time I got to Radiant Guardian, if my opponent went first, I was already on five health. And uh, getting the Radiant Guardian down didn't feel like it meant very much at that stage. Uh, some of the numbers I'm considering moving around are Concerted Strike between 2 and 3, Harsh Winds between 2 and 3. Um, Omen Hawk, we cut 1 for a Kindly Tavern Keeper. Uh, all the other numbers so far feel pretty good. And the fact that Babbling Beard effectively acts as Flash Freeze 4 and 5. When you have Ash out, he just tutors up another Flash Freeze. That's pretty cool. Keep in mind, this is a pretty hard teched deck trying to beat Lee Sin. So when we face decks that aren't Lee Sin, uh, it may not be as ideal, although it should theoretically have a good matchup against Endor, uh, as well as potentially being able to foil the atrocity of War Mothers. Although War Mothers is just an irritating match in general, I think for all people who play against it. Uh, there are also a lot of awkward draws where you just get all your six drops, 
And these are, uh, while well, this is a six drop, you're fine to have in your opening hand. When you get all of these, it can be uh, kind of a death, a death sentence. It's pretty, pretty unfortunate when that happens. As usual, we haven't really made much progress. Diamond is really uh, more about the raw numbers of games you play. Hey, it's Lee Sin. Okay, so we get to see in theory if this works out. Honestly, the Lee Sin deck is so powerful. It probably doesn't matter what we play. Like, it's just the better deck and we lose to it anyway. We're going first, so we are going to get to Remembrance on 3 before they can Z. But we are vulnerable to um, to Mountain Goat on this turn. So maybe we should Mulligan everything else to see if we can find a 2-drop. Which gives us a little protection. If you Mountain Goat's here, we can break with our plan and just uh, cast a Sentry. Uh-huh. Well, that sucks. Um, so we're getting hit by the goat no matter what. We can protect this if we want, but yeah, it sucks. That was a pretty good hit by our opponent. Um, we could troll chant take the power from this, give this defense, and then Ash, or Remembrance. Yeah, this is probably fine. Rhyme Fang means I think we Ash and then Rhyme Fang. And then we'll have Flash Freeze and Troll Chant up to potentially refreeze if uh, he pales. Clearly he's going to have something to do here. We're just hoping we have the, uh, the answer for it. We can actually do both too so we can protect our Ash from the Mountain Goat. Okay. The time is right. Strike now. We're just hoping he doesn't have another pail. Again, we played this about as good as we could. He still had everything under the sun. We did force a lot out of him on that, but that's probably enough for uh, for the game to be lost. We did our best, folks. And now you know why this deck is broken. Mystical levitation requires wow. concentration. Moving on. So, I don't actually think, based on that demonstration, I don't actually think anything can beat uh, the least index other than burn, which is why we're seeing so much burn. Uh, I think in that matchup, if I was just trying to aggro him down with two ones, uh, he'd already be at like six health, and he'd be at the stage where he was threatened by uh, stuff like Doom Beast and Decimate. Whereas our strategy of trying to be uh, reactive and be able to play on the same rubric as him is just uh, not strong enough to keep up with how powerful and pushed Lee Sin is at the moment. Well, 
which is why the next video we do, we're going to be playing Hades. And uh, I've installed it. I have not played it at all. So it should be pretty interesting to see um, to see how that goes. I'm more interested in waiting for the patch to happen, where they uh, will hopefully revert or fix uh, Bastion and Lee Sin and make some more changes to make the game balanced again. Whereas at the moment, it's it's really kind of a, a drag to play when you know that there's just a deck that's so much better than the other decks that it even beats the decks that are designed to target it. I am glad I got that, that match on record, though, because you got to see our perfect responses against their deck, and it still was just totally insufficient. The skies darken with their approach. So we're going to get 4-4 uh, four, four Dragon to this turn. Interesting. Even to the young bloods, we are nothing. <laughs> So while I could Ash or Freeze, I'm going to take this out immediately to try to prevent them from casting their 5-5. Uh, their five five. Save us a little more tempo there. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Now, because I'm afraid he could have um, single combat here, I'm just going to play the Avarosian and leave up the kill chain. Unyielding light. Faster than my arrow? I think not. Which of these is more important to protect? I mean, they're both important to protect, but... I think currently this is, weirdly. Because we have the two freeze effects. Uh, I guess we'll go with that idea. I don't know if it's 100% correct. I do want to try to get some of their stuff off the table. And this leaves us that option. That's kind of unfortunate. If he casts something, we're probably just dropping Lux so we have a free block on this. Otherwise, we're just probably chumping here. My life for Rosa. We're also getting into the uh, Mind Splitter phase of this matchup, and we do not have good answers to Mind Splitter. I fight for the fallen. Clad in shining sunlight. Let the light guide you. 
comes Mind Splitter, right? We have an answer. Yep. We had to pass there because as soon as we attack, we no longer have the threat of removing it. So this is going to be a soul. Sure. Look out for Reavers. Hoping we get a spell next here. Ash is pretty good. All the world on one arrow. Completely depleted in resources against the control deck, which is pretty common. Unfortunately, we faced Lee and got trounced, and uh, Burn would be another usually manageable matchup with this pile, but I don't think it does very good into hard control. It's still a deck that's ultimately trying to win with creatures, and the deck that kills everything is... Uh... Yeah, we're just gonna... We're just gonna move on, folks. Some may ask why we conceded there. It's because our opponent had five cards in hand, and they're a control deck, and they just killed our only out, killing their large creature, and our second champion. So we're just going to move on with our lives. I feel like every time I try to play a deck on stream lately, if it's anything even slightly uh, experimental, I just lose every game for, like, the entire set and then the second I play it off stream it starts performing typical problems right opposite streamer luck that tracks for this channel Experience for it, but not LP. Okay. The same guy who just beat me like a minute ago. I get to get beat by him again. Same guy, same deck. Probably going to be the same result, huh? Um... Okay. A couple options on three. Yeah. 
Meta seems to be different every day, different in the pocket of the time you play, like the people playing, the decks you face. A true Felyorian will come. Heed the bar. This like the exact opening he had before, minus the uh, gift giver. Maybe he didn't actually get the serpent there. Bask in her radiant blessing. I will unite the Freljord. So we're just gonna open attack next turn. Also taking all of these because Pale Cascade is a thing. Stand together. This plays around Meteor Shower. You're interesting. Seeing one of the pro primary problems with this deck is that a ton of their cards are cantrips. A lot of the cards that they play win them these combat spots and also draw them cards, which is like the the central issue that causes such problems against the deck. Like it doesn't run out of cards. If it wasn't insanely powerful and also could run out of cards, could be exhausted of resources. Um, you know, then maybe we, uh, maybe there would be a defensible position for, for describing why you think this deck is, uh, is still reasonable to play. But being that it draws a card off its win condition, it draws a card off pale, it draws a card off healing, uh, just all of these things that give it free cards that also enable, uh, the leveling of the, the broken champion here. It's... To say problematic is not to be forceful enough. It's a grievous oversight. Because we're already weakened, another pail here kills us. My suspicion is he would have used a second pail if he had it there. Hush. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting choice there. So we suspect he doesn't have another pale. So even though we drew Ash, I think the best bet is to just make sure we get rid of this right away. And we don't really want to attack into his life gain anyway. So no pale there. Digging for his next Lee Sin. We got the Traveler off of Solari Priestess. No way to know what this card is. Um, do we want to go ham here? We're wasting three mana. Sure, let's go ham. Also, this gets around Deny, which some of these decks run. That's a good get. Don't have any bullets left in the gun. We're just on uh, on all blanks here. Supernova. He got Supernova off the Traveler. Wow. Talk about fucking lucky bullshit, ladies and gentlemen. He got Supernova off of the Traveler. Well, it was a good game, folks. And, uh... It's always fun to get blown out by random bullshit, and um, yeah, what a what a good time, what a good fun time this is. Navarosa's name. 
try to get our uh, our Radiant Guardian enabled. Now you'll know he's got 800,000 cards in hand and we have two. Yeah, let's just, let's just move on here. So I think we've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Lee Sin deck is pretty unreasonable. There is no reasonable way to play through it or around it. Even a deck that is designed solely to be able to manage it uh, is completely and totally inadequate. So remember when uh, when you're able to comment to Riot, go to their website, um, go to their feedback page, and leave feedback about this problem. Go to the official Legends of Runeterra Discord and complain to developers about this problem. Uh, this this shouldn't be an acceptable state to put the game in and then just walk away for three weeks. Uh, I don't give a shit about your real life. I don't give a shit about your fucking children or what other goddamn projects you're doing. If you're going to design a product like this and then absolutely poison the well and then go take a vacation for two weeks, okay, look, you're not the fucking Donald J. Trump, all right? You can't just set the world on fire and then go fucking golfing. If you fuck something up, fucking fix it. Don't wait. You knew you fucked it up the minute you fucked it up. Unfuck it, you fucks. I've been Gravity Goo for Not Safe for Work Moon Terra. In case you're confused why we're called Not Safe for Work Moon Terra, you're not confused anymore. Thanks so much for hanging out and watching. I hope uh, as I heal from my surgery, uh, my position gets more sunny. But so long as they continue to make this game shit, it probably won't! Later.